very good day to you. We're up at the rail siding today and uh, the neighbours have been loading uh, eucalyptus uh, timber which they're probably going to send up to the mines and we thought it would be a nice place just to have a chat to you. I want to speak to you today about unrighteous anger. Sometimes we get angry and we have no right to be angry. I'm not talking about righteous anger which is when a man gets uh, angry at the devil or at um, blatant sin. I'm talking about God having His way. You and I are in no position to tell God what to do. Jonah was a prophet of Israel. He got angry with the Lord because God saved the people of Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a terrible, terrible city. And there was so much sin there that Jonah didn't even want to go there. He went the other way, remember? <laughs> and then they had to chuck him overboard because the, there was such a terrible storm and they, the, the sailors realized it, it was because of Jonah. And a big fish swallowed him up and he was in the fish's uh, stomach for three days and three nights. And then the fish spat him out when uh, Jonah had repented. And then reluctantly, Jonah went to Nineveh, preached the gospel, and the whole city repented from the king all the way down. And Jonah was angry because he didn't want them to be saved. <laughs> Have you ever been in that position, folks? Let's just read this scripture. I'm reading from Jonah chapter 3 and verse 10. Then God saw their works. This is the people of Nineveh that they had turned from their evil way and God relented from the disaster that He had said He would bring upon them and He did not do it. Okay, but if we go to chapter 4 verse 1, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly and he became angry. And so he prayed to the Lord and said, Our Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore, I fled previously to Tarshish. Okay, that was the other way. For I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Verse 3. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Folks, I've, I've met people like that who said to me, that man will never become a believer. He's too wicked. He's too self-centered. He's too ugly. And yet God saves him fantastically. Saul of Tarsus was one of those men. He was actually on his way hunting the believers. I've heard one man say he was a serial killer when it came to uh, Christians. Okay. Another one was that uh, big fisherman by the name of Simon. Okay, whose name was Cephas, Peter, the big fisherman, a blasphemous man, a man who was uh, arrogant, who was proud. God humbled him and used him to head up the church. Folks, I want to say to you, God is no respect of person. In fact, if you look at Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, the Bible says, Whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Let you and I not be like Jonah of old who resists doing the work of God. If God's telling you to go to that drunkard's house, go to that prostitute's house, go to that publican or that thief's house and tell them about Jesus, be prepared for them to give their lives to Christ. And when they do, rejoice that another soul has been saved from eternal damnation. It is not for you and me to determine who should be saved and who should not be saved. So we thank God that He saved you and me. Imagine if He was not a righteous God. If He was not a God of compassion, we'd have no chance. So remember, folks, if God tells you to go and witness for Him, you better do it. Until the next time, God bless you and keep preaching the gospel.